in a world crying out for a top 10 show. John Roca and Matt Nost are here to bring you the top 10. Take it away, boys. Top Teners, welcome to another episode of Topic Thunder. Here on the Top Ten Show, I am John Roca. Uh, I am Matt Nost. If you're new to this show, this is something that we do for the patrons. They send in questions, topics, whatever they want us to talk about over at patreon.com forward slash the top ten with the number ten. And we talk about it. And that is the gist of the show. It's uh <laughs> It's That's something right. we used to do for Patreon only, but once you know COVID said anybody's sitting around bored, yeah. we're like, well, you guys are going to help benefit the world. You know, thank yeah, you. Uh, thank you for your help. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, we jump into it and uh, get going. I think you're I think you're up first this time around, uh, my friend. Sure. Um, all right. This one is from Machine Gun Lemke. Cool. Oh. It says, uh, what's up, guys? Uh, this should find us right around Election Day. So my question is, what is the most American movie ever? Wow. This can obviously go so many ways just because of your experiences as an American, but I'd love to hear your thoughts narrowed down to a singular film. <sighs> Matt knows this is a tough question. Uh, this it's, is, and you get to go first. So. I have my choice, but is it? I don't think people are going to like it. It's Armageddon. Armageddon is the most American movie ever made because that is such an American approach to things. Let's get a bunch of oil riggers. Teach them quickly to be astronauts in a couple of weeks. Send them up there and somehow, some way through American gumption and know-how, they're going to figure this thing out. And the main American sacrifices himself for the good of the world. And everyone's waiting for America to solve this problem, to save the yeah. world yet again. And it's Bruce Willis. It doesn't get more. And Michael Bay and Shiny Lights. Uh, it doesn't even get more American than that, in my opinion. I think it's a pretty American film. Um, I think you could say that about so many films, like a, a Saving Private Ryan. You could say that. Oh, that's a truly American that's a good film. American film. Practically any underdog uh, uh, sports story. So yeah. Miracle, Rudy, Hoosiers, uh, whatever. Throw a yeah. dart, hit a, a fucking movie. Remember the <laughs> Titans? Yeah. They're all, it's like, oh, that's that. That is Americana right there. Right. Um, <laughs> The first thing I think of is an, an old bit of a friend of mine, but it has nothing to do with movies. <laughs> Which, so it's, it's a comic that every comic enjoyed watching. His name is Joe Sinclitico. Uh -huh. Because it, at the time, for years, you didn't know what you were going to get, but it was almost always hilarious, especially mm -hmm. for the comics. He's just had a weird way of looking at the world, and if you could tune into it, it's pretty fucking brilliant. <laughs> but he was talking about he... Uh, his mom played uh, Lee Greenwood, you know, proud to be an American. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. And he's like, I hadn't heard that song in so long. And my mom had the cassette and played the living shit out of it in oh, the car. God. I heard wow. that song so many times. And he's like, I just picture Lee Greenwood, like standing in front of American flag waving. And he's just got a corn dog up his ass. And he starts going all these white trashy type of things on top of, on top of, on top of while he's recording this. And like, that's. When you say proud to be an American, that is the first image that I get in my head from a bit he did like three times, but it stuck with me. Yeah. Uh, uh, anyway, so the most American, I don't know. I mean, how do you say what is the most American? Well, I think why, that's why Chris said it's like your own experiences as an American, you know? And so in me, the son of immigrants, I mean, there's, it's an interesting experience, the American experience through my eyes versus like Matt's eyes or anybody, or maybe Lemke's eyes who's been, who sent in the thing. So, like for me, Mr. Smith goes to Washington. That's a pretty American film. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a Wonderful Life is an is an Americana film. Sure. Um, I think On the Waterfront is an American film as well. This idea yeah. once again of the like Matt just said, the underdog fighting against the corporate system, the corrupt corporate system, and standing up for the little guy so they get a shot. And that's our, that's the one ironic thing about America, right? We love the underdog story. Because we still think we're the underdogs and no one believes in us and everyone comes after us. Yet we're the top dog in the yard. It's an amazing way to exist. This country is we're the top dog in the yard. Yet in our minds, 
we still think we're the underdog as well at the same time. So I'm sure it, it infuriates other countries, uh, but that's actually how we see ourselves. So it's a, it's just interesting. And it comes through in our movies. I think more than anything else, we don't like yeah. movies where the, the corporate guy is the winner at the end. We like the movie where the, the underdog fights against the corrupt system. Oh, of course. Yeah. Or you get a peek behind the curtain at the corrupt system, like a big short or margin mm. call. Mm-hmm. Two other very American movies. Easy Rider, <laughs> you could say, is an American yeah. movie. Good point. Yeah. Uh, Wall Street. Wall Street. Yeah, I've just yeah. they're all parts of the complexity that is America. True. I True. think I salute that statement. <laughs> uh, I mean, you could argue yeah. Do the Right Thing is an American sure. movie from the Black Malcolm Experience. X. Yeah, Malcolm X from the Black Experience. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Selma. Um, yes, right, right. Yeah, it's yeah. it. What I mean, any topic you can find a movie and be like, yeah, that that to some degree, sure. I, I yeah. can make an argument on that. Um, yeah, like don't be a menace to South Central. <laughs> it's an American. It's an American movie. That's a slice of life, apparently, of what maybe it was kind of like. <laughs> Wait a minute, are you being serious right now? South Central. South Central, but you said don't be a menace in South Central. Oh, I'm sorry. It's South just Central the I, I was thinking, well, I was thinking menace <laughs> society and South Central at the same time. Uh, well, that was good. I like that. I was like, I was like, wait, is he joking? Wait, is he joking? No. I, I should correct him here. <laughs> Let's see what else. Yeah, man. I would throw La Bamba in there as a Latino. I mean, the, uh, he's a son of immigrants who's like yep. wants to succeed. He finds the American dream and he dies tragically. You know, so it's just like this guy. That's a lot of a an America America aspect to it for sure. Yeah. Mm. Um. Karate Kid. Karate Kid. Sure, that's a pretty American movie. What What about the American President? Is that an American movie? Or Dave? Sure. You know too? Okay. I don't think in the same way as we what we were just talking about. Right. 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 Completely different. No. Not not complete. I, I know what you mean. I guess we were, we were before the examples were more <clears throat> somehow representation or emblematic of, of life. Here, yes. Right. Right. Good or point. ideals as opposed to shenanigans at the White House. <laughs> <laughs> well, David specifically. Shenanigans. <laughs> well, chicanery. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of things. I, 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 I but Marmageddon is my uh, ultimate choice for so it's many reasons. One. It's a good for one. So it many does. Reasons. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you could under that through that prism, you could say that Transformers, yeah, is exceedingly sure. representative of our culture. Right. Right. Absolutely. It's, um, it's a damning statement in and of itself, <laughs> but it is more than likely true. Absolutely. Um, all right, should we move on? Uh, let's do it. Yeah, thank, thank you, Mr. Lemke. Yes, thank you, Lemke. Uh, Henrik Winterland is our next one. He says, Hey there, John and Matt. Hope you guys are doing all right. Uh, just all right. Okay, cool. My question today is a pretty simple one What are some of the destinations you most look forward to visiting once the COVID situation dies down? Personally, I can't wait to go back to Iceland. Oh, wow. I was there last summer and it was absolutely incredible. Can't recommend it enough. Thanks again for being an endless source of entertainment in these trying times. Best wishes from Sweden, Henrik, uh, or Enric. I don't know how you say it in Sweden, but yeah. Um, Matt, what are some of the places you want to visit once the COVID situation dies down? Uh, we had talked about making a trip to Mexico City. Oh, cool. Because you can just shoot down and like take a four-day weekend and get to see like a tiny fraction of one of the world's largest cities, but still go right. spend three days down there and then fly back. Cause it's not a long flight. And mm. you know, if you can, four days isn't impossible to find every once and again, as opposed to taking a big long trip mm. uh, outside of like everyday life. I don't know, just the random, I don't get to see any family this year. Right. So right. It'd be nice to do that. I won't be able to ski this year. Mm. Um, you know, normal white guy shit. <laughs> So, um, what about you? I think it's Ireland and Scotland uh, for me, and hopefully for us, uh, Lindley and I, because like um, we had a great time in in London and and Liverpool when we did our show. Hey, when we did our show, mm-hmm. um, but um, but I didn't get it. We didn't get a chance to go to Ireland or Scotland, and so I'd like to go to Edinburgh. I'd like to go to 
um, you know, uh, Dublin. I'd like to go to a couple of the cities there and, and see some castles and walk amongst the highlands and all of that. So certainly those are the two that jump out. Tokyo is a possibility in my head as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been to Australia a couple of times now for one day or a day and a half. Sure. Um, but that would be fun to go for an extended period of time down to Australia and see some of the cities or the sites there. Um, yeah, I mean, I've been to Paris. I've been to Spain. Spain would be fun. Rome. Rome would be great. I think those those places that I haven't been to, like Barcelona and Rome, would be really interesting to go to. I think those are the ones that for me. After visiting the good chunk of the rest of Spain and Italy, Barcelona mm. is basically the San Diego of Europe. Oh, really? It's like so yeah. chill and, and whatever? Yeah, it's, they have the history, but it's a entirely laid back. Right. Um, so it just felt like an older San Diego to me. I liked it. <laughs> Uh, which, but, which is the most metropolitan city in Spain that you like? That was more like New York. Was there a city and it was more like New York? I'd be Madrid. Really? Okay. It's not even uh, closed. Wow. Yeah, that's your number one. Your number one stunner right there. Okay. Uh, had some of our favorite food oh, that cool. we've ever been to consistently. Dude, I had an octopus pizza that was one of the best pizzas I've ever had. We went back to it two days later because we both loved it so fucking much and had it again. <laughs> it was so good. Pizza. I love it. Yeah, we went to this. It was right around the corner from where we were staying, and uh, yeah. you know, it was, they had some reviews online. So we're like, "Ah, oh, we'll go check that out." And uh, I mean, it was just dynamite. We right. sat down to another next to another. Uh, it was a father daughter or something like that. Okay. Or no, no, no uh, a mother son. Okay. Um, and he was there for business for a while, and she came over to visit, and we just happened to be sitting next to him in a room full of Spaniards, by and large. Right. And they were just finishing up. And they're like, oh, this was good. You should try this. Like, oh, how long have you been here? And just, it was nice, cool, oh, very chill atmosphere. Nice. Yeah, yeah. But then we tried one of their dishes and then we got the octopus pizza and it was just, ah, it was wow. so good. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. But yeah, I, I'm sure you would love Rome. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, seeing the, seeing the uh, archaeology, I'm oh, sorry, the, uh, the, um, shit, the, the, you know, the, the, the sites, all the, all the, um, coliseums and what have you and, yeah. and and all of that would be a blast just seeing all of the history um to feel the weight of it under my feet would be incredible I know. you know so yeah i did it the first time we crossed the bridge and it was like i'm crossing the river tiber <laughs> oh, what? right holy shit i'm crossing the tiber yeah. and then we went to like other areas and then you're walking around and you go to like uh, the palatine hill you know where the palaces were and you just right. see all the different you think about the history that took place we stayed Right next to the first, we stayed there two separate points at the because we flew in and out of. Right, so right. It was like three, four days at the top, three, four days at the end. Right. And the first time we were there, we stayed next to the Coliseum and the Circus Maximus. And oh, you cool. Walk out and you're like, fuck. So this used to be Circus Maximus. Whereas Catherine li- likes Roman history, but it has no right, right the aura right. of it. It's just the beauty of what's left. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, but yeah, but I mean, chariot races right there. <laughs> and then here's where the gladiatorial we did the coliseum tour i think yeah you dig all that stuff yeah i'd be all about it um i don't know if lindley would but i'd be all about it so she'd probably go in shopping or go look at other places or whatever and, uh take pictures and stuff but i would love the architecture and kind of and the ruins yeah. and all of that yeah definitely definitely um cool my, all right my recommendation would be to stay in a neighborhood not in the heart of that stuff okay and it's all kind of walkable right so the back half, we stayed like south, across the River Tiber, south of the Vatican. In okay. This, in this new, it used to be, a, you know, in Roman times, it was a slum. Right. But it's been gentrified with young kids and all that jazz. And it's got a bunch of good, great restaurants and great places to stay and it's right. laid back and chill. Wow. And you can just 15 minutes walk over to the Coliseum and deal with all the touristy shit and then go right. back to good food and relaxed yeah. atmosphere. Well, there you go. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, okay. Uh, thanks, Henrik. Appreciate you sending that question. In. And uh, certainly Iceland and Sweden would be fun at some point down the road to go see some of the Norse countries. Is that, is that what it is? The Norse countries? Yeah. I sure. Think. So, yeah. Uh, Denmark, thanks, stuff like that. Um, all right. What's our next one? Um, our next one is from uh, Mr. Joe Abara. Nice. And says, what's up, guys? Got a few uh, questions to ask on the this edition of Top Topic Thunder. For some reason, my brain's not wanting to work all of a sudden. Matt, I really enjoyed that commercial you did with, with Activia. Sure. 
when was that shot? How was Jamie Lee to work with? Any fun stories from that? Uh, this one is for you, John. You sometimes give Matt shit for his man crushes on Ryan Reynolds and Jim Carrey, and I think one of them may be Steven Seagal. So Ooh. I have to ask, John F. Mary Cuddle, The Rock, Tom Cruise, a bear rug. Love you guys. <laughs> Stay safe. All right, you first. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it was just at a, a gym off the 405 out okay. in, what is that, uh, is that Culver City? Mm-hmm. Sure. Somewhere somewhere in that. And um, people were still, so if you see anybody working out in the background, those are members. They were not extras. Oh, wow. So we just kind of came and shut down an area of the gym itself. Wow. So like, there's this old man that shuffled around for like two hours, you know, just had nowhere else to be. He's in a disgusting uh, wife beater with a fucking uh, like creased, perfectly khaki shorts. Like something you wear gardening, but it's too nice for gardening, but you're an old man type of thing. And he had a, Italian loafers on with black socks. But the loafers seemed like they're about a, maybe they're so old, they, the leather had stretched. They seemed about a half big, a half size too big. Oh, so he's just shuffling around. And we were, me and uh, my friend Sarah, who's a comic, which just happened yeah. to both book it. We're just cracking jokes like, look at this fucking old man. <laughs> I give him a shit. I can't wait to be, you know, that old. And we're talking about him because he was around for two hours. And then the sound guy at the end of the day was like, you guys are, I don't know if you realize you're mic'd up the whole time. So, <laughs> he's like me and the other two, three sound guys are just dying as you're tearing this new, the old man's ass apart. Hey, but he can't hear us. Do you know what I mean? It's harmless. It just doesn't make <laughs> each other laugh. And I was like, ah, you know what oh. are you going to do? That's brilliant. Uh, That's fucking brilliant. Oh, dude, just, you know, <laughs> he looked like a Pixar old man just shuffling around. I slightly Carl. hunched over with a little gut. Oh, Carl uh, Fredrickson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just fucking great. Um, That's awesome. That, and she was, she was nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. How many years ago was it, man? Do you, do you remember now? Like 10, eight, seven? Um, at least I think eight. Wow. Okay. I mean, I stopped doing commercials like five, six years ago. Right. Right. Um. So. Yeah. Yeah. Probably something. Okay. Like that. About eight years ago. You know, one nice thing she did is she uh, read read me her line off camera. Oh wow! Over and oh, because the director kept oh. So I did like. 20 takes, right? Yeah. Of just one line, 20, 25 takes. And the director wow. kept coming out and be like, hey, can you get to me like this? And then I give him two takes, three takes. And then he'd go and disappear behind this curtain and then come back out and go, hey, can you, how about this time? Give it to me like this and do it again. And he goes behind the curtain, comes back. And eventually she, she's giving me lines the whole yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my, honestly, nonstop eye contact. It was always locked in. If you were talking wow. to her, it's like, all right, I'll give that back to you. I have zero problem. If that's yeah. how you want to interact. Sure. Um, but nice as can be, that was just her yeah. way of, I guess, communicating. And eventually I just looked at her and was like, look, is it me at this point? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm going to defer to your judgment. You would know better than anybody here. And she's like, no, I've done 10 commercials with these people. Uh, and this happens all the time where he, he's going back to talk to the ad agency right now. Right. Cause they're watching they're getting, your daily. Yeah. That yeah. He's behind oh. the curtain. Dude. And then, then he comes back. Um, and I guess, uh, you know, at that point we were mic'd up. So I knew it when he came yeah. back in, I was like, Oh fuck, they can't hear us. Cause they're obviously back there listening or watching. Right. right. Um, didn't think about it later with the old man. I was like, Oh, we were mic'd up all day. Okay. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know if they just turn it on when we go. Why would you record all day? <laughs> yeah, why waste uh, the space on your yeah, I don't, on you your know, memory? But, yeah. But what do I know? I, I didn't think about it. <laughs> and she was like, no, they they have no fucking clue what they want. So they're back there wasting your time and mine. Wow. And I was like, all right, well, you know, and he comes back. He's like, hey, you guys OK? Everything good? Like trying to <laughs> smooth it over. And we were both like, yeah, it's fine. And then I had to go in and do ADR. And I said that fucking line from a disembodied voice in New York coming through their studio because they were listening it over there. Right, well, right. How about like this? I like this resolution. I like this resolution. I like this resolution. I like 
this resolution. I like this resolution. I like this resolution. I just, I mean, for that was oh. the line that I just kept having to repeat on there. Yep. And then they ended up going with, I don't even know. I don't yeah. even know. Yeah. Dude, that's the way it is. We talked about it on the show, I think, a, a while ago when I got that Minute Maid commercial. Same thing, bro. Three hours of saying, oops, someone forgot to boost. Three fucking hours. One <laughs> oops, line. Someone man. forgot to boost? That's it. That's it. And I, I, they're like, ooh. And they're like, okay, do it. Like, And I would go, oops, someone forgot to boost, which that Minute Maid commercial. And then I'd be like, no, can you do a little more? Okay. Oops, uh-huh. someone forgot to boost. And, and it was like, oh. And then. Can you do it's it? The more? Worst. So it's the it's, worst. And, and it's like, you're right. What you're questioning, like, is it me? You, is you it, go into that place. You have to because yeah, you're like, you're I've given right. it to you everywhere. And plus me, I never took an acting class. Right. Right. So I don't I don't know if I'm actually mixing it up. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. If you're getting I believe I am. Right. But right. I, I'm, I've bullshitted my way to shooting this commercial. I don't know what I'm doing. And this was like my fourth or fifth. <laughs> so you kind of yeah. know. Yeah. But I had friends that booked, and they're like, you don't need to take an acting class to do a commercial. And I was like, okay. And I never did. I just started going to commercials. Right. You just need to be good in front of a camera. Yeah. Natural and relaxed in front of the camera. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's all I got to do. So sometimes. Uh, yeah. I, I remember once I had an commer- uh, audition. I might have told you this, but it was years ago. Uh-huh. So it was first some PlayStation game, right? It was at uh, um, that one joint that's off of Ventura up in the valley, but it's over nearer to Burbank than it is. You know what I mean? It's not okay. Sherman Oaks, not Studio City. It's like Studio City, Burbank, right on the anyway. Right, right. And they're like, all right, so it's a for a PlayStation game, but it's about the ocean or something. I don't know, but you're you're pretending to be at the Seattle fish market where they throw the fish. Yeah. And so I have to pretend that one guy is throwing a fish across my face and another guy's catching it and I feel like I can do the spiel. So I do it and I act it out and the guy was like, yeah, okay, I need to act like they're throwing the fish but not act like they're throwing the fish. And I was like, I don't, I don't know what that means. I'm pretending with all this in my head. Like I told him and I was like, look, man, I think I gave you what I have. I can try it a different way but I don't know what you're talking about and I don't want to waste your time. And he was just like, let's do it. He was already pissed off. He, you could yeah. tell. It was one of those days where there's your mark. And you're like, oh, yeah, literally just walked in the room. I love those guys. Those are my favorite guys. Yeah. They're super frustrated with their own careers. And they're mad that they're having to deal with other actors. Quite po- yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. yeah they yeah. took shit from somebody else. Yeah. Now, you're just a stupid <laughs> actor. So just like, say your dumb line. You fucking pretend away, you asshole. And you're like, I get it. I get it. Uh, I'm helping you make money. And I'm yeah. getting paid minimum wage to help you make money uh yeah i know they're the worst they're the worst so, some, some of those but, people run the sessions anyway go sorry go ahead yeah but i like there was one with kathleen kennedy over in santa monica wow she had a, a couple guys that were kind of taskmasters right right but it was not talking down it was like help me get the best out of you so then i can show the client something good like let's treat right. this like the job that it is and i had zero right. problems they could give very specific critique. I'd be like, all right. And I tell them, be like, I think I could do it. Like, let me try and tweak that one thing. And then we do it and be like, okay, yeah. you know, thanks. I appreciate it. In and out. I don't mind the Eins Vi German nature of right, it. Right, right, right. But when it's the petulant, yeah. uh, and you're like, all right, man. Yeah. Listen, the passive aggressive thing. I went off on a cast director one time, not a director, I guess the one running the session one time. Sure. Because after the third take, it was this uh, ginger haired guy. It was a third take. Uh, I was like, what do you fucking want? Because I'm not here to waste my time or your time. So tell me specifically what you fucking want so I can get out of here and you can move on to the next person. And he kind of like, it kind of froze him. And I go, yeah, I don't need this fucking commercial. Just tell me what you want so I can get on with my day and go actually get paid because I have no idea if I'm going to book this thing. And nine times out of 10, I don't. So I don't want to waste my time any more than you do. You know, it was like precisely. Kind of, yeah, I just you just hit that wall. Like when you're young and you come out here, not youngness, but when you're new and you come out here and you're like, you know, uh, yeah, whatever you want, yeah, I'll do it multiple times. And you go home and you have those like, God, I suck as an actor. I'm not good. But all those things that you go through as a fucking performer. When you get older, you're just like, look, I've been doing this long fucking time. What do you fucking need so I can move on? You know, and it's yeah. you just don't the, the, you just remove the weight of like the pressure of needing it so bad that it just kind of 
you know, kind of flies away and you're just like, okay, then I can do it, you know? So, um, cause those guys got, I mean, they, they don't understand sometimes how they can fuck with you and send you home and put you into a spiral because they're dealing with their shit and their uncomfortableness or unhappiness with their life. Yep. And then putting it on you, uh, because you're not getting it right completely the way they think it should be in one take, you know, or yeah. two takes. It's frustrating. Yeah. Yeah. You just got to learn to not care and give a fuck. Exactly. 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 If you're a hot chick, they'll do eight takes with you. But if you're like a dude coming in, it's like two to three. If, if it's a guy running the session uh, anymore, I bet you that doesn't happen near as often. Well, uh, well, maybe not. Maybe not anymore. You're probably we right. haven't been uh, in the the game near as you know in the past few yeah. years. I will tell and you this though. I've started to go back, Matt, because um, I got signed in with new hosting agents. They also represent me for some commercial stuff. Mm-hmm. So I've started to audition remotely. Um, but we need to have a conversation because I guess now we are at that point where like, okay, what is the thing you want to audition for versus stuff you don't want to audition for, you know? And yeah. they sent me a PSA for a dude who's strung out on opioids and I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to fucking do it, you know? And so I looked at Lily, I was like, look at this shit. She's like, she read it. And she goes, just do it like shit. Just do it terribly. So you don't have to worry about it. Then you did it. And then have a conversation with them later and tell them exactly the kind of stuff you want to go yeah. for and the stuff you don't want to go for, you know? And so, all right, that makes sense. <laughs> but it was terrible. I had to be like, you know, strung. I had to be like, Oh, going to work a nice hair, blah, blah, blah. And then you send it in. So you don't even get that second take or third take or whatever. You just sure. send it in. So it's interesting. Yeah. But you could also do multiple takes on your yes, own. You can. you can. And you can so, edit them in. Yeah. 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 yeah you That's get to now, use fucking performance enhancing drugs <laughs> whereas before it was just it was more an olympic endeavor you know what it I mean? was you're right you're right kids you're weren't right. paid yet uh <laughs> but yeah. yeah i i just i know one a buddy of mine you know who booked right before all this started and now yeah. it's probably never going to air type of thing because they have to <sighs> move on it was for a car commercial damn uh, yeah uh and I think they were building their campaign around it, but everything changed after that. Um, what are you going to do? You know, yeah. what are you going to do? True. True. But he's only had two remote auditions since then. That was February or beginning of March, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Just like, there's not a lot of work going down for that sh- shit anyway, but right. yeah, I'm glad I'm out of the racket. I don't miss it. <laughs> no, I honestly, and I, and I told them it's only a big job that I'll drive up to LA to audition for everything else. Yeah. I'm just going to do remotely because I don't, there's no logical reason for me to do that. It's uh, it's annoying. And all they care about is making money off you, man. They don't care about oh, necessarily yeah. building your fucking career or building your path. You, like, no. you got to be hard with them. Yeah. Dude, my agent, I had, I had fucking booked four commercials in five months, right? Wow. Just, that's great. Oh yeah. Shit. Just, uh, just crushing it. Yeah. But, during that time, I told him, I was like, hey, man, I'm going to be gone after from Christmas to New Year's. I started telling him in August. Yeah. I went into his place, uh, did it in person twice. Just be like, man, just to also to check in because it was, you know, book in and might as well. Yeah. But emailed a few more times on top of that. And then I got a call on the 28th, which is my birthday. Mm-hmm. And I was skiing and I was like, I'm out of town, man. He got mad because I couldn't make a call back. And I was like, I'm out of town. I yeah. have come into the office and spoken with you about it twice. I've emailed your assistant three times about it. And today wow. is my birthday and I'm skiing. And he's yeah. like, we well, need to be in town for callbacks. And I was like, you know what, uh, Phil, you can kiss my ass. Because <laughs> I knew I'm making money for you. And you need to sh- you you got upset. So now you're trying to back your own play. Like you can't back down. Right. Because he because doesn't want to be embarrassed in front of the casting yes, director. In front yeah, of, exactly. And also his, his client. stupid ass forgot. Yeah, yeah. He wants to act like he's still the big agent and all that. And he's like, right. I know I'm booking at the top tier of any of your people right now. So you can kiss my ass. You can kiss, you can kiss it. Man. Pucker up. Kiss it. I told you five times that I was going to be going in person <laughs> twice on my birthday uh, skiing. You I can kiss it. my ass. <laughs> um, you can kiss. Yeah, but then I just, I, if, if it was, I realize it's rarefied, but if you go straight to callback, I don't mind going to callbacks. Oh, yeah, no, true. Very true. Yeah. Um, straight to callbacks. Just because yeah, everybody's in a better mood. Yep. yep. Whereas the first one, people are disgruntled because it's, you're seeing hundred to two hundred people oh, yeah. for this one thing. Yeah. So everybody's sitting around waiting and whatnot. Whereas callback, it's like you're in and out in fifteen minutes. Yep. 
clients are there. Like everybody's in there. They've got a fucking meat platter in front of them and maybe a <laughs> glass of champagne. They're enjoying themselves. It's like it's a much better environment. Yeah, I agree with you, man. Callbacks are the way to go. And yeah, I don't even care if I only get one, you know, one commercial in two years of just straight callbacks. I right. th- That's at least enjoyable. Yeah, very good point. Yeah. True, true, true. Uh, all right, we're at the 30-minute mark, man. Should we wrap it up here? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. All right, well, thanks, everybody, for watching this episode of Topic Thunder or listening to this episode of Topic Thunder. You know how it goes. Sometimes we'll get one or two questions, and we'll just go on for 15 minutes on one question. That's the game. But please keep sending in your uh, topics or your suge- uh, questions for us here on Topic Thunder, uh, and uh, we look forward to answering them as we keep doing this show every week. Damn straight. I think you said that beautifully. And join us over at patreon.com forward slash the top 10 with the number 10. You can follow me anywhere at Matt Nost and uh, go to youtube.com forward slash. Uh, was it the top 10 podcast? Sure. I'll look it up right now. You go ahead and close and I'll make sure. All right. That I get all right. right. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can follow me at the Roka says on Twitter and on Instagram for all the stuff I'm doing and all the things that I've got going on in my world. So please follow uh, me there. But yes, what Matt's going to, we have a YouTube channel uh, for the top 10 and we're trying to get that thing monetized. So please come over and watch all the stuff we do there. The shows, the, to- the main shows, the topic thunders and the golden tickets are all available there on YouTube for y'all to watch. Yep. It's youtube.com forward slash the top 10 podcast. So I just want to make sure go. go and subscribe uh, to that and uh, hit that bell. So you can be notified of, of new content when we drop it on the channel. And we do have live shows coming. Matt and I are going to have conversations about doing some live uh, shows in turn like this, like a live, like this yeah. virtual uh, and uh, possibly once every month. Now that I'm settled in San Diego, my stuff is up. We're going to figure out uh, when's the first good, first good time to launch a first live show of the top 10 virtually. And we'll be able to do have here from you all and boom, boom, as we're counting down our top 10 as well. So, or it might be a Q and a, we'll see. It'll be a lot of fun. It'll be a live show either way for sure. Um, okay. That's it. Thank you everybody for uh, watching us here. And uh, that's it for this episode of, Topic Thunder.